Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Kev's Movie Corner. I am Kev, and this week we are talking about High Noon. (laughs) High Noon came out in 1952. It is a western. Um, Synopsis on IMDb says, A town marshal, despite the disagreements of his newlywed bride and the townspeople around him, must face a gang of deadly killers alone at high noon when the gang leader, an outlaw he sent up, sent up years ago, arrives on the noon train. It stars Gary Cooper as um, Marshal Will Kane and Grace Kelly as Amy Fowler Kane, his new wife, who we just mentioned. Um, this movie came out in 1952, if I didn't already say that. It is a black-and-white western um, based on a short story from a magazine in 1947 called The Tin Star by John W. Cunningham. Um, and this film was directed by Carl or Fred Zinneman. Um The Tin Star is mentioned a couple times in this movie, but we'll um, not specifically just the phrasing the Tin Star, uh, referring to the the badge that the marshal um, and deputies wear. Um, It is a relatively short film. Uh, It's only an hour and 25 minutes. Um, And what I thought was interesting about that when I was watching was it, um, the whole plot of the movie takes place over that amount of time. So it starts with the well, it starts with a scene where you see the outlaws, um, most of the outlaws riding into town. And after they ride through town and everybody notices them, it it shows um Kane uh and Fowler getting married. And they, uh, after, as soon as he, as soon as the wedding's over, he gets a telegram. Um, he's, he's going to leave as being the marshal because he married, a, uh, his wife doesn't want him to be around, uh, guns. She's, uh, they call her, uh, she's a Quaker in this, so she doesn't want him to be around guns or violence or anything like that. So, um, he's leaving as marshal. They're getting a new one the next day. So he's, but they're still leaving before that. He gets a telegram saying that uh, the man who he sent up, again, quote-unquote sent up uh, years ago, Frank Miller, um, has been paroled, even though he was sent to prison uh, in the North for murder and was supposed to be hanged. So he's been uh, released and is uh, purportedly coming back to town on the noon train, um, which is about an hour and 15 minutes from arriving. So, again, whole movie is in the time span that the actual, like, movie takes. So, it's kind of like a one-for-one what's going on, almost. Um, uh, the Kane ends up leaving to start with his, uh, with his new bride. Um, decides that he can't do that, he needs to uphold the town, turns around, comes back. And the rest of the movie, until the last few minutes, is his him going around trying to recruit people to help him fight the uh, Frank Miller and his uh, goons. So there's going to be there's three guys waiting at the train station for Frank Miller to arrive, um, and and uh, once he gets there, there's going to be a, a showdown, and at high noon, which is when the train arrives at noon. So whole thing. Kane's going around trying to find people to help. The townsfolk are pushing back. They don't want to help. They don't understand why he doesn't have deputies. His actual deputy, that he, his only deputy that he does have, ends up leaving over a dispute. Um, there's a little bit of a kind of a semi-love triangle thing with um, Frank, one of Frank, it sounds. It seems like it was one of Frank Miller's lovers, and then Kane 
got with her after Miller was put in jail, after he put Miller in jail, and now he's married to um, Fowler. It It's just a whole weird kind of plot that goes along with it. I Her role, it's Helen Ramirez in the movie. Her role almost could have, I mean, she plays a couple, like, Parts where she, like, tells Kane's wife that she would stay with him or she should stay. She would, you know, watch her man if, if it was her and Kelly's tr- or, uh, Fowler's trying to leave because um, she doesn't want to watch her new husband die. Um, the whole town thinks that he's going to die at noon because it ends up being four guys against one, um, which is not usually good odds when you're all handling when you're all holding guns. Um, so, whole thing, I don't really understand, I mean, Ramirez is kind of like a side thing in the whole thing, and I don't know that her part was necessarily needed, but it was interesting, kind of, the way they tied it all in. Um, but, it goes through, um, he goes through the entire day, he's, you know, he comes across people making bets on whether or not he's going to live or die. He, you know, gets into a couple, gets into a, a couple fights, one with his deputy, um, and this whole thing. And he just kind of is. Everybody keeps telling him like, "You should have left. You should have gotten away." And he's like, "Well, I can't, because uh, they just chased me, and and I don't want to run for the rest of my life." So, they, uh, this whole thing happens. He doesn't end up getting anybody to help. Um, so at noon, when the train arrives, Frank Miller gets off and he goes into town with his, uh, his three, uh, cronies and, um, they get into a kind of little shootout with, uh, with Kane that lasts for mm, probably 10 or 15 minutes of the last part of the film. And, uh, Kane ends up. Picking, picking two of them off, um, his new wife, who does not like guns and didn't want him to be involved in this, ends up killing one of the other ones, and then being taken uh, kind of as a hostage for about, you know, I don't know, 45 seconds. And then um, uh, that lures Kane out to the main, main um, antagonist, uh, Frank Miller, and they get into a really quick shootout, and uh, and 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 Miller dies, and Kane is victorious. So it's a again, it's a really quick movie, um, and there's a lot of you know, like I've gone through the overview of the whole thing. There's a lot of little things that happen, but this is the gist of it. Um, at the end, after when Miller's lying dead in the street. Um, Kane does end up leaving. He does end up leaving with his wife. And um, you can tell all, all the townspeople come out when the whole fight, when the whole battle is over and are kind of gathered around. And he just kind of looks at all of them and uh, throws, his, uh, throws his badge on the ground as in disgust. You can see the disgust on his face because obviously nobody, um, even though he's protected the town for several years and... Um, helped clean up the town, which the town people, townsfolk, talk about, but the fact that he cleaned up the town, and he, he, you know, made their town best marshal they've ever had, but none of them help him, and he is just kind of disgusted, throws his badge on the ground, and then rides off, and that's when the credits roll. That was it. It was very good. I, not once, um, I've talked about it before, one of the things that I look at when I'm, uh, Watching a movie is how many times I look to see how much time is left. Uh, I didn't do that once, but again, it was a short um, movie. It was only an hour and twenty-five minutes, so less than less than ninety minutes. Um, but it was um, it was it was a good watch. It's it's an old black and white film, uh, an old black and white western, and I'm not a big fan of westerns, but I I did like this one. Um, the uh, Movie was, um, did it get any awards? Um, oh yeah, it did. It won a couple awards. Uh, it won an Oscar for Best Actor for Gary Cooper. 
It uh, was nominated for Best Picture, Best Director, Best Adapted Screenplay, um, and it also won Oscars for Best Film Editing, Best Score uh, of a Dramatic or Comedy Picture, and Best Song, um, which was the the title song, The Ballad of High Noon, uh, which runs during the title uh, credits. Um, It also won one, two, three, four Golden Globes, um, and several, and was nominated and won several other awards. Uh, the film in the 19, in 1989 was one of the first 25 films to be selected for preservation by the National Film Registry at the Library of Congress. And it was called, uh, culturally, historically, and aesthetically significant. Um, again, I think it's a great movie to watch, um, it's it's nice. Um, I saw on IFDB in the in the kind of notes at the, um, in the movie that Gary Cooper was apparently um, Gary Cooper's a little older in this film, and he had been his like reach had been going down, and just before the year before this movie. Uh, he was removed from Motion Picture Herald's list of top ten box office performers. So he had he'd been in the business for twenty five years, and he had kind of been in decline as a draw for the movies. Um, but obviously, you know, he was fifty one when this movie came out, um, and obviously he he won back some of that um winning again like i said uh, oscar for best actor and um and just being involved in this film so um yeah it is uh it's a good movie um i don't uh, really have anything else to say but it's a good movie it's definitely worth a watch like i said it's it's 90 minutes so you know shorter than shorter than some TV shows, like some special TV shows. So it's not, not, not anything that, that takes a, takes a long time, but I definitely recommend watching. Um, yeah. So, uh, next week, um, just going down the AFI list still, uh, we're going to watch number 28, all about Eve, 1950. So, um, stay tuned for that. Uh, want to watch it with me, do so. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and I will talk to you then.